One of the mains voltage LED GU10 lamps I use in the ceiling has just failed and I thought, oh, that'll be one of the cheap Chinese ones. No, nope, it was one of the Philips ones, so that's a bit disappointing. Let's uh, take it to bits and see what happened. It made a sort of crackling noise and then, well, I don't know if it even lit. It must have lit, I guess. Not 100% sure. Let's see if I can start by impaling myself. The front cover of these is glued in, if I recall correctly. Oh yes, that doesn't want to come out. So this one is the one with the these LEDs, which show slight discoloration of the phosphor, but it has been in use for a while. Um, these LEDs contain more than one chip, it, although it's um, although it just looks like four of the standard surface mount LEDs. I can't remember how many are in each. I think it's maybe four in each, three or four anyway. So let's take these screws out. Tricky to get out. And the reason they've used the multiple of LEDs is because it's a capacitive dropper, which is unusual for a Philips. Maybe it was their attempt at a fairly economic light. Now, can I get this out without desoldering, or do I have to desolder? I think I might have to desolder this. I'm pretty sure I have to desolder this. Okay, desoldering iron and desoldering wick. I still tend to go for the desoldering wick as the first choice for desoldering things. It's a copper braid with um, flux on it. And when you apply it to solder and heat it, the it just basically acts like a sponge that sucks the solder up into the braid. It's quite effective, it usually leaves pads very clean. I think that looks pretty good-ish. Let's find out. That'll do. Now, is this glued in? Or is this just... I've opened one of these before. Oh, right, okay, that's how it comes out. And here's the power supply. Nothing visible at first uh, glance. I may have to uh, release the circuit board to be using. Yeah, I'll do. Anything visible? Is it that little fuse, F1J, that might have gone? Nothing visibly broken in it. Okay, let's check that fuse and see if it's uh, failed. First meter that comes to hand is the fluk. Oh, the fuse has failed, but I wonder if uh, something else caused it to fail. Maybe it did its job, or maybe it's just, maybe there's a bad, maybe I arced the switch when I turned it on and it just caused that slight transient, it was just enough to blow that fuse. Feeling that it could have been the capacitors um, bridging slightly, I'm not 100% sure. Nothing visible at all. Oh well, nothing terribly exciting there. Um, the only thing I can really think of doing is uh, soldering this back on to here 
and then adding a couple of wires, and uh, maybe putting another fuse across that. OK, let's give that a go, shall we? And we're back with a non-Phillips compliant modification. A new fuse has been patched across. I'm just going to check that's 100% intact before I do this. And you may now place your bets. Is it going to suddenly just decide to work as normal? Or is the new fuse going to blow? Place your bets now. Is it going to blow or is it going to work? Three, two, one. It's going to work. Ah, so I don't know what happened there. Is it because it doesn't like harking? No, oh, it seems fine. That's, I don't know, maybe that was just a duff fuse or some quirk happened. Oh well. Don't really know. Annoying. But not to worry, I've got plenty of spare lamps. <laughs>